Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. We visited our friends Johnny and Linda Key last summer during tomato season. The Keys grow and preserve a large amount of vegetables each year, and we wanted to see how they canned their tomatoes. We'll pick, sort, boil, skin, and core a day's picking, which ended up yielding a couple dozen quart jars of stewed tomatoes that'll be made into a variety of meals throughout the coming winter. Stay tuned. We're going to uh, process tomatoes, canned tomatoes, whole tomatoes. And uh, our procedure here is to pick them off the vine as they're beginning to ripen, we can't leave them on the vine until they get to their prime because the birds seem to pick at them. So we take them to a ripening table for a couple of days, and then at their prime ripeness, we bring them in and process them because we think they taste better, the flavor's better. So uh, we're going to go get some off the table that's been there for a couple of days and bring them in, and then we're going to go to the we call everything a patch. <laughs> if I'm going after peas, we call it pea patch. We're going to tomato patch and uh, pick some tomatoes and put them on the table for processing later in the week. Then we'll come back in and do these up that we took off the table. There are two varieties, the celebrity and the uh, romas. We're going to mix them as we process them but these have been on the table for a few days, or a couple of three days, and they should be at their prime. Naturally, there's going to be some that turned a little faster. Yeah, turned a little sure. faster, had a little flaw on them, or a little bruise, or something, and they they tend to take care of themselves. So when you get to processing, they're already at the culling stage. These are called in indeterminate tomatoes? Is that right? A, yeah, so they, they, they all ripen at different times. They do, but, well, these actually are the opposite. These uh, wrong, uh, celebrities. They sort of make in one crop. That's according to the book. Okay. But they will let up <coughs> after the first initial crop, but then they'll come right back and go to blooming. And in the fall of the year, we'll go out and harvest several buckets of green tomatoes right before the night of the first frost. And then we will have tomatoes ripening plumb up till Christmas. We'll have fresh tomatoes. I don't believe they taste exactly the same as a vine ripe tomato. Sure. We, we know they don't because sure. the ones out of the store that were picked greener for shipping, right. you know, it's red wax. Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> they don't have a lot of flavor, but it is a tomato. Yes, sir. Where do you put them? When, where do you put them in the fall when you pick them green to let them ripen? We have a back room, a, sure. a den-like room that we use very seldom that has a dining table in it and she'll just spread those out in trays on that dining table and uh, then we go out each day and uh, choose the in. ones that are beginning to ripen to use.
Where are we going for? Right here. Good deal. All right. <coughs> I'm going to go with, I've got clean water in this. I'm going to go ahead and light the burner, and while we're in the garden picking more to go on the table, it'll be heating up, and we won't be just sitting here watching it. Right. Perfect. We're ready to go to the tomato patch. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. Field work has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. Yep, we've been very pleased with this variety. The celebrity. Yes. They're a hybrid, sure. so you can't save the seed. Right. But we're not in the. I'll go ahead since I got a leaf I need to. Uh, we're not in the greenhouse business anyway. Right. I'd rather just go to. They're not expensive. Let the, let the nursery people contend with that. Yeah, and saving tomato seeds is a project too, as opposed to like beans. Yes. It's sort of like we found out raising the, with the horses. You can select a really good mare and have lots of money tied up in her. You can take her have her bread and have lots of money tied up in that. Wait another year, get a baby, which is going to be the wrong sex, right. the wrong color, right. bad mind, get hurt. Get hurt. Right. So out of about 10 or 20, you're going to get the one you wanted. And three years later, you get to step up on him. Or you can go to a farm that raises babies. Cull the one that got hurt and didn't grow off and had the bad mind, the wrong color. Get the best one he's got for a small portion of what you would have in it anyway. Right. Take him home, step on him. That one's going to go bad before it ever ripens. Okay. I always get excited and can't wait for them to, oh, yeah. to start. And then I about make myself sick because I can just eat tomatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I know it. Two or three days, that'll be ready to repeat the process. Yeah. Anyway, they had to put it off. She's still testing positive for COVID, but they said that don't matter. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. Go ahead. You know, we were talking about the different processes and procedure. Uh, we're beginning to study it a little bit. The low acid foods like squash, you know, you're talking about 65 or 70 minutes at that temperature processing time. When they're in the bottles, the jars, and the jars are in the pressure cooker. 
Uh -huh. yeah. That long, okay. Yeah. And the potatoes are double what, but uh, you take pickles, which you put vinegar on, which is acid. Uh, they don't even have to be processed, just sealed up, or, okay. and they'll keep. And then the tomatoes are high acid, so they don't take near as long. In fact, they can be done by water bathing. And uh, like we were talking about a while ago, you know, I guess that was about the first vegetable that was ever canned. And in 1847, they came up with a crude procedure to can tomatoes. We don't can ours with anything else in them like that. Um, it's just easier to add it later if you want it. Yeah, you don't mix up your vegetables. Uh -uh. Well, well, you're also kind of doing one thing at a time. When you're correct. Processing. Yeah. Different vegetables come off at different times. Once you put all your ingredients in a soup, you got a lot of soup. Yes, yes so you I do. Up, I end up freezing a couple of big bags of soup yes. in the freezer and dating them. And Even at a, a one pint at a time. It's a lot you know, of right, yeah. Pint of, pint of several different things makes two gallons of soup. Yeah, right, especially exactly. if you're just feeding two people, you know. Yes, sir. So. Yeah. I believe we're about there. Yep, they're cracking. What, baby? They're cracking. The skin's cracking. That laid down there by that fire. Got hot. It warmed it up. I'll reach down there and get that window. I was going to crawl down there, but I okay. thought I Okay. All righty. Makes them very easy to peel. Yeah. Makes them worried they're. Yeah. Yeah. They're rotten. Well, I'm that way about a lot of this. Uh, oddball type stuff if you want to call it that her little brother is a master gardener and he likes to play yeah and uh, he'll plant purple green beans and this and that and the other and and all he likes the heirloom varieties of everything right but sometimes it's sort of like our, our beef cattle you know you had the old longhorn and you had 
multi-purpose breeds. But when they went to developing new breeds, uh, it all got better. Right. <laughs> you know, so same way with the heirloom vegetables. There's a reason we got away from those. Well, everybody likes something, different things, and that's why, that's what you do, that's the work, that's why. You know, commercially grown sweet corn, they spray it with insecticide to keep that little worm off the end of it, that you're cutting off the end of that cob anyway. Right. But, you know, the store's not going to keep it when it's got a worm in the end of it. It turns a lot of people off, but we don't put any chemical on ours, and so the end of that cob gets cut off and he gets put in a discard pile. Right. But we're growing it for ourselves. That's so all we've got to do is be content. We know what's in it, and how it's grown, and what has been put on it, how it's been processed. So you're releasing any air bubbles? Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Just getting it so that all the juice kind of mashes the tomato down in there and lets the juice go all in there so that it's good. You can mash and do a little bit, but this knife just makes it a lot. Just a better knife makes it work better. Linda and I discuss it quite often. I keep bringing it up. Uh, I can remember when I was younger, kid, a kid, mama had a garden and she'd put up things. It wasn't always perfect and it wasn't always a big yield. And I've seen her carve on stuff to try to get something out of a particular tomato or whatever that now I just sort of toss it. And I just wonder what those older people that had to do the best they could do with what they had, because there wasn't any other choice, you didn't go to the store, right. would think if they saw some of the better quality stuff that we've been able to have for the past, past few years. And they'd be horrified to see some of the stuff that you tossed to the side, because you got more than you yeah, need anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would just... Uh, not settle well at all that we were discarding that. Right. Fire out? Nope. Oh, you turned it out. I turned it out. Okay. It was rolling up the storm. I figured I was ready. Yep. Looked like we caught them about right. I have no idea how many we might process today. It's hard for me to calculate right. what we're going to have in jars. Right. I guess we just do what was on the table. On, the, on that side, and do as many jars as we're capable of processing at one time on the other side. Ooh, that's still hot. Yeah. Well, your bath water gets warm. Yes. It doesn't cool it off as quick anymore. Pack them down in there and see there's 
this air bubble right in between them yeah and with that knife you just can mash and let all that juice go down in there Get a few more in there. Right. Because if you don't pack them tight, you'll have a bunch of juice at the bottom and, and the tomatoes float to the top. Tomatoes tend to separate a little anyway. You don't see it when you buy it in a store because it's usually in a can. Right. Right. But we have pretty good luck with them staying. The way she does it. And you just learn this over the years. It's not. <laughs> sure. And um, I will. I got hit over. Sorry. I will. Uh, Let me get. You don't clean these. They're all small now. You might have a tomato or a piece of green of salt, and if there's any little thing, it will not seal. It'll come apart. How about that? Our counting, your counting, and my counting were the same. That's good. You've got that head space on all of them, which is once it gets drained down, it's supposed to be a, about a half inch ideally. We'll let those close the door on the garden shed and let those sit here overnight and get really cool and put, put them on the shelves tomorrow and do it again in a few days. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.